Tis the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, I give God thanks for his goodness, for his mercies, for his kindness towards me and my family. I give God thanks for all that he has done and for all that he is still doing. I give God thanks this morning for wisdom, for understanding, for those things that he has given to me that I ordinarily would not have gotten for myself. I thank God for life. I thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercies and his love. And as I come to you this morning one more time, let me say a blessed and peaceful independence when it comes to all of you. And may we have a safe and productive one. God bless you. This morning, I want to speak to you on the subject of the reason why I should not die and go to hell. And whatever your name is, whoever you are, I want you to put your name in the place. The reason why Everton should not die and go to hell. That I replace it with your name. And I want you to say this morning, the reason why I, whatever my name is, should not die and go to hell. You might ask yourself this morning, why did you bring up a subject like that? But I have to bring up this subject because I recognize that we are ending or approaching the end of the age. And if I don't warn you about the oncoming danger, then it simply means that I would have reneged on my responsibilities. I would have not warned you about the dangers that lies ahead and the destination that a person who dies without Christ is heading for. And so I am simply here this morning to share this word with you and to make sure that I leave no stones unturned in an effort to get you to get to the place where you recognize that it is your choice to determine your destiny. Let me repeat that. It is your choice to determine your destiny. In Romans chapter 6, which is what I'm going to use for my base this morning, and verse 23, the word of God says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so when the question is asked, why should I, why should I not die and go to hell? Or why should I not, why I should not die and go to hell? My apologies. It's serious, serious, serious business. And I repeat the seriousness because it is really serious. God says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And this tells me something. A person is going to die and go to hell, and that is based on the person who does not place himself or his faith in Jesus Christ will receive the wages of sin. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 made it abundantly clear. It says, if you work for $10, it's $10 you're going to get. And if you don't work for it, you're not going to get it. And so the Bible is clearly stipulating that a person dies and go to hell simply because that's what he or she works for. You have to understand that there is no magic in this. It's a simple case of you work for something and you receive the wages for what you work for. When a person works, the person receives a wage or payment for that work. 
This verse is speaking clearly of two choices. There is no third choice. You work for hell or you receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. The reason why a person dies and go to hell is a simple case of that choice the person made. If you in this life continue to work for the wages of sin or you continue to work living in sin, when you die, you will receive the wages or the payment for sin. And that payment for sin is death. But there is another way and a better way. And the Bible says, but the gift of God is eternal life. What a comparison. What a great difference that you will work for death or you can receive life. Which person naturally would want to work for death? We need to make this clear to you this morning, all of us as ministers, that you stand to receive death if you work for death. But Jesus Christ have already paid the price for your sin and all you need to do is to receive eternal life and you will be delivered from hell. I can't make this any plainer when it says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It is very important that you understand that you don't need to die and go to hell. Going to hell is a choice that you make. You work, you get paid. A person comes and gives you a free gift, you don't work for it. But in this then, the Bible is clearly saying that the person who continues to live in sin, when he dies, he will go to hell. Whereas that person who accepts Jesus Christ as his or her personal savior will escape death or hell because he or she had received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Now I want to read something from Revelation chapter 21 verse 10 as a reference. And I'm going to read a few verses from verse 10 to maybe verse 14. And this is what it says. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I, I want you to realize this. This is not a joke. This is not one time go in and it's over. This Bible is telling me, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the dead and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you how loving and caring God is. God gave us an opportunity to accept his finished work or we can continue to do our own works but guess what there is coming a day when we will receive what we work for listen to what he says here and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they will judge every man according to their works oh lord have mercy I'm trying to persuade you this morning. Don't make that choice for hell. Make that decision for heaven this morning. Listen to what the verse went on to say. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you this morning? Do you understand what I'm saying when I say you don't need to die and go to hell? Because you have a choice. 
And I'm going to show you through many scriptures this morning the choices that you have, that you can, the, the choices you have available to you to determine your destiny and how you, not anybody else, you are the one who actually determines your destiny. Now let's look at something else. In Romans chapter 5, verses 6 and 8, this is so profound. Because why would a person want to go to a place where the fire is burning ever and ever, and then uh, other than hell, there's a place of bliss, of, of warmth, of streets of gold, I mean, crystal lake, tree of life. Why would you want to choose to go to hell? Listen to what Romans chapter 5, verses 6 and 8 says. While we were still helpless, powerless to provide for our salvation, at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for the ungodly. Notice. Even when we are sinners, Christ died as a substitute in our place for all of us that are ungodly. Now, it is an extraordinary thing. Watch this. For one to willingly give up his life even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a good man, one who is noble and selfish and worthy, someone might even dare to die. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I hope you got that point. Because what this is saying is that in our sinful state, while we are still working for the wages of sin, while we were enemies of God, God sent his son Jesus Christ to die and pay the price that we are supposed to pay for our own sin. So we see clearly that there is no need for you to die and go to hell. The only reason why you are going to die and you will go to hell is as a result of your choice, what you work for. Listen, you can't want any better than this, where you were supposed to die and someone came and died in your place as a substitute, making provision for you to receive life. And rather than receiving life, you choose death over life. God cannot be blamed for where a person ends up. Because God has done everything that he needed to do to make provision to stop you and all those out there who are living in sin from going to hell. This is so extraordinary. Listen to what he says. No, it is an extraordinary thing for one to willingly give up his life even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a good man one who is noble and selfish and worthy, someone might even dare to die. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died our death. Let me explain that a little bit more. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. We are sinners and deserve to die. But Christ so loved us that what he did, he came as a substitute, died the death that we are supposed to die, offering us life and an opportunity for us to be with him in heaven. And there are two choices, and I'm going to repeat that because I want somebody to hear that this morning. That if you choose life, you will be with Christ in heaven. But if you continue to work the wages of sin, 
then the end result will be death and hell's fire. Notice. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Do you realize that? Do you recognize that? Why would you want to die and go to a place of torment? I'm going to show you more this morning because I don't want you to go there. And this is the reason why I'm doing this particular um, subject this morning. Christ died so we don't have to go there. There can be nothing better than this. We sin and should be put to death. And Jesus said, Father, let me pay for their sins. And he did. And in spite of pain for our sin, we're still saying, God, I understand what Jesus did, but I don't want what he did. I'm going to make my own choice. But if you make up your bed, then you're going to have to lie down in it. But I'm telling you that there are only two choices. There are no neutral grounds. Jesus Christ has already done what he needed to do. It is for you to make the right choice to stay out of hell. Let's look at something else. To escape hell, all you need to do is to believe that Jesus has paid the price for your sins, accept the free gift of eternal life, and hell will no longer be your destination. But if you refuse, and you're wondering why is he repeating that so much, if you refuse, then your destination will be hell. And that is exactly what you work for. Now I want to make this plain this morning. Hell is not a trial. It's not a place that you go and test to see if you like it. And then if you like it, you stay. And if you don't like it, you come back out. No, there is no such thing. There is no such thing. It is not a place that you check out. It's not a hotel you go to and you determine that this hotel is not nice. And then you leave and go to a next hotel until you find one that is suitable for you. As I said to you, there are two choices, heaven or hell. And at the end of the day, what you work for, that is what you're going to receive. According to the Bible, listen to what it says. Your excuses will not be regarded in hell. Your pleas will be of no avail. Your pretension to be interested in Christ and to love him will not work. It will be set aside. The sentence will remain irrevocable. And there will be no appeal from it. For there is no higher tribunal to bring the case before. Judgment having been passed, the execution of it is immediately follows. And let me show you why. We're going to look at the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. And when we look at this, we will find out exactly what is going on here and will not want to go to that place that most of you are heading for based on what you're doing the way you live right now. Listen to what verse 26 says. Because some people believe that they will go there and then they will make a determination well don't it's too hot so I'm, I'm going to come out of here and ask God to bring me to heaven. No, it's not possible. Listen to what he says. But Abraham said, Son, verse 25, Remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he's comforted. Let me show you. Heaven is a place of comfort. That place of paradise where the believer go is a place of comfort. 
but heaven is even of greater comfort than paradise. And he says, and thou art tormented. Watch this. Because some of you believe that you can go and then when you finish, go back over. It is impossible. Luke says, and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Well, let's, let's just dig into this a little bit more. Let's just look and see what this is. Luke 16, 23 should make it clear that this is what Luke is saying after the rich man called for help from hell. Notice the Bible says, in hell he looked up. He says, and beside all of this, between us and you there in that chasm fix, so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able to. And at once none may cross over from here to you. Oh my goodness, this morning I'm appealing to you. Listen to this. The rich man looked up from hell and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And he was saying, send Lazarus over to dip his, to dip his hand in something to bring water to cool his tongue. Let me say this to you. Do you realize what Jesus just said in verse 26? While you're in hell, nobody can pass over from heaven or paradise to come to you to help you. And you can't leave from hell to come to meet them. It's a permanent place. Hell is permanent. Once you work for it, that's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to remain. That's why you should make every effort not to die and go there. Watch this. Great chasm. What does the great chasm mean? It's a space between two elevated objects. So we see one is above the other, but what you can see clearly is that they can see one another because there was a conversation going on. Listen to what he says. It's fixed. It is so established that it will never be movable or passable. It, you cannot pass from hell to heaven. And neither person who goes to heaven can pass from heaven to hell. Once you work for whatever it is, that's your destination. Why would you want to die and go to hell? Listen, what can a tip of water do to his tongue? But it shows the torment that takes place in hell. And it shows the reason that no human being should go there. But I want to show you something else. The Bible talks about has a great chasm fixed. It will forever divide heaven and hell. Though the rich man could see and speak with Abraham, he wasn't close to him at all. There was a great gulf fixed between them and their destinies were fixed for all times. Oh Lord, young man, young lady, look at what God is offering you today. He's saying, let me take the penalty of death away from you. I've already paid the price for it. But come to me and receive the life that I have in store for you, which is life eternal and a life of bliss with me in heaven. A life of comfort, of joy, of living in my presence rather than living in hell with the torment which will go on forever and ever. You see, have you ever wondered why Christians continue to go out and talk to people and take the insult? We do it during rain. We do it during sunshine. We do it even when people are trying to kill us, when we're trying to save their lives or present them the gospel. Have you ever wondered why? Let me tell you why we do that. The reason why we do this is knowing the terror that lies ahead. We, through the gospel, try to persuade men and women 
of what lies ahead and to let them know that it's not a trial, it's not a hoax, it is a reality that there is a heaven and there is a hell and those persons who go to hell goes there as a result of choice. Those who go to heaven is as a result of a choice also, but they need to understand that whatever you work for, in the sense of debt, you will receive it. We could stay home because we're already saved and allow you to continue to live your own life, but you have to understand that we would have been reneging on our responsibilities of telling you that hell is a real place and that it was not made for you. And we're going to see that as we go down. It is important for us to let you know that you should not die and go there. Yes, all of us are going to die. But the choice of where we spend eternity is up to you. You and you. The other reason why you should stay clear of hell is based on scripture. Your senses will function. Oh, pastor, what part of the Bible says that? The same Luke chapter 16. Let's look at verses 23 and 24. And let's read them. It says, and in hell he lift up his eyes. I want you, I want you to, I'm, I'm going to read them and then point out the things that are still very applicable, still very active in terms of his senses while he was looking up. Being in torment and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Notice, he lived his life on earth. Now he's in hell and watch and see what was happening. Knowing the terror that lies ahead, we persuade men not to go to hell. Listen to this. What's the three? What's the functioning things that were there while he was in hell? Luke shows at least three things that were still functioning for him, even though he was not on earth still. He was in the grave or in hell. In hell, he could still see. Oh my goodness. In hell, he could still hear. And in hell, he could still see or feel. Let's go over them again. In hell, he could still hear. In hell, he could still see. In hell, he could still feel. He called for water to cool his tongue. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And he heard because he and Abraham, based on the scripture, had a conversation. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. You notice Lazarus was in comfort. Lazarus was comfortable in Abraham's bosom while the rich man was being tormented in the flames. Let me make this clear this morning. It is not because he was rich why he went there. It was because he refused to accept Christ. He refused the gospel and continued to live in his sin. And that's the reason why he went to that place of torment. Now what could have been done there? Nothing. Abraham clearly made it out to him that listen it is not possible for anyone to move from where I am to where you are and it is impossible for anyone to move from where you are to come to where I am 
your time of opportunity is running out. Why you should not die and go to hell. Let's continue. Some people believe that they might be able to get an opportunity to go and warn those persons who are behind. You know, I left my sisters and my brothers and my neighbors behind. So guess what? I will get an opportunity to go and warn them not to come here when that time um, comes. That is not possible. Listen to what it says. You cannot get out to warn anyone else once you are in. Luke 16, 27 to 28. And let's see what it says. It says there, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. <laughs> I mean, this is not a joke. But look, 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 look at what he's saying. Having realized that there is no hope for him now, when now it is too late, he seeks to have Abraham send someone from the dead. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place. Today, let me tell you something. That did not happen back then, and it's not going to happen anytime. Today, I am warning you and beseeching you, hell is real, and you don't need to go there. If you don't act here, when you get there, you cannot change anything. No one can return from there to warn you. If you don't listen to the gospel now, there is no help or means of delivery from hell after death. You see the reason why we would walk in the rain, we would take your insult, and some of us are even beheaded for the gospel's sake? You see the reason why we, knowing the terror that lies ahead, come and warn you about what will happen when you get to hell. You cannot stand before God on that great judgment day and tell God you never heard the gospel. You cannot tell God on that great judgment day that it was your friend or family or those wicked Christians who caused you not to get to heaven because you have to give an account for yourself. You work and you will receive the pay for the work that you did. So you see, Abraham said to him, listen, you can't come over. And listen to what he said. Moses, uh, listen to what Abraham said to him. They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. Let me say this to you this morning. You better hear me. You better hear my brothers who are witnessing to you every day. You better hear those messages that are telling you, you don't need to die and go to hell when God has made heaven available to you by offering it through his son. It was too late for last for, for for the rich man. Lazarus couldn't change, neither could the rich man. It simply means that Abraham was saying, listen, nobody going back here to tell them anything, you know. So you better, pray. it's almost like you better pray that your five brothers listen to Moses and the prophet. Because if they don't, they're going to get the same payment that you got. Now, God's will is not for any to perish but that all should come to repentance. But what about if I decided that I don't want? What happened? The wages of sin is death. What you work for is what you're going to get. But the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. If they do not hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they persuade it, though one rise from the dead. You know, listen, believe you me, we have had so many people who said that they died and went to hell and went to heaven. And believe you me, in spite of their testimonies, I am not sure what percentage of people have listened and their lives were changed as a result of what happened. And so even if 
someone was to die and go to hell and come back and explain to these people in the world who are living in sin what happened. They will remain in their sin, most of them, because guess what? They believe that there is no hell. But hell is real. Just as heaven is real, so also is hell. Now, let's get to a very pertinent point in terms of hell. If God so loved us, why did he make hell? Let that sink in. Let that question sink in. Because I'm going to give you the answer. If God so loved, will he send anyone to hell? Let that also sink in. If Jesus Christ have already paid the price for our sin, then why is someone dying and going to hell when Jesus has already paid the price for him? I want you to let that sink into your system too. Because it's very important for you to understand that Jesus is not sending anyone to hell. That person is going to hell as a result of choice. Oh my, let me repeat this again. There is no returning from there. Once you have made your decision and your life is ended, what you work for, you shall receive. Now let's look at something here that I think a lot of people would have missed early on and not picked up. And this is very important that you pick this up. Very, very important that you pick this up. And it is in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. I have done this particular passage of scripture before. And the more you look into scripture, is the more you get out of it. And when I looked in at this and discovered something that I did not see before, I said, my goodness, no wonder we need to go back over the scriptures and allow the spirit to reveal what is in the scripture to us. And listen to what he says in verse 41. Then he shall say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Now I had looked at this before. And I have not really picked up this particular aspect. Or I might have not said it, but did not realize the depth in which this goes. And listen to what it says. Rather than just saying into fire, Jesus Christ was identifying a very specific fire, implying that there is only one of its kind. Which means that there is no fire on earth like hell fire. The fire where the devil and his angels are going to go into. There is no fire on earth like it. If you notice it, it says in verse 41, Depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire. Into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angel. That is saying that it is a specific fire. It only it implies only one of its kind. The expression prepare for the devil and his angel qualify which particular fire we're talking about. So we, we, so we see here that the hell that God prepared was for the devil and his angels. And what we've seen here, it, 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 it clearly stipulates here curse into everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels so this particular um, fire is an everlasting one which means that when it destroy you that's the end of you
prepare for the devil and his angel. Qualify which particular fire we're talking about. It is the fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. God has prepared a particular fire for the devil and his angels. Not for believers. Um, for unbelievers, sorry. The fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. And he made it clear. It tells us two things there. The people who will burn in the lake of fire. And then he tells us about a specific fire. And he tells us about who the fire was prepared for. Now, now tell me something. When I looked at this, this is telling me something about the fire that the devil is going to be burned up in. This is not an ordinary fire. This is different from any fire. That's the reason why it is identified so specific. Because God is saying it was not for humans. Is, is that clear to you, my friend? Is that clear to you, my sister? Is that clear to you, my brother? Is that clear to you, my neighbor? Is that clear to you, my cousin? Is that clear to you, my aunt? Is that clear to you, my enemy? Not, I, I'm holding you as an enemy, but those of you who hold me as an enemy, I want to ask you a question this morning. Is it clear to you that this is a specific fire prepared specifically for the devil and his angels and that you will be placed in it as a result of your choice? This is not ordinary, my friend. This is not something that is, is, is going to burn you and then you ouch and then you put some water on it and cool it off and then it ends. When you look at Lazarus, in Hades and he was tormented and is asking for water to cool his tongue that is not the same as this hellfire and if he's asking for water in Hades to cool his tongue from the torment can you imagine this particular fire that is going to be burning the devil and his angels have you really given this any serious thought as to what this is saying? God loves human. And he would not in any way allow you if he, if he can, as a matter of fact, he did everything that he could or he can to avoid you going there. Are you recognizing that you are going there as a result of your choice? Oh my Lord, I, 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 Paul says, knowing the terror of God, we persuade men, knowing what lies ahead, knowing what you're getting into, knowing where you're heading. I am here trying to persuade you. You don't need to die and go to hell. When Jesus have already paid the price for you and made heaven available to you. Let's just go over what we have covered before. Before I, I, I pray for those of you who are heading in the wrong direction. I'm here this morning to present you the gospel and to tell you, you put in your name. Don't need to die and go to hell when Jesus Christ have already made heaven available to you through his death. Have you ever been burned by fire? Have you ever had a serious burn with a regular fire? And we are looking at a fire that is specifically prepared for the wicked one and his angel, and you're choosing to go there? Let's look at it. Let me give you the reasons why you should not go again. And just give you them by themselves so you can understand. One, 
It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Which tells us, number one, that hell is what a person works for. There are two options, heaven or hell. You can work for hell and you will go there or you can see Christ and be with Christ and go to heaven with him. You can accept what Jesus Christ has already done and you will be in heaven with him. Or you can continue to live your own life and end up spending eternity in hell. Number two, Jesus have already paid the price to keep you out of hell. Why would you want to go to hell when there is something better in store for you? It, it, it says, it clearly demonstrates Christ's love for us. Christ loved us so much or he loves us so much that he was not willing that any one of us should perish but that all should come to repentance. But you are refusing what he has already done. If you continue to do that, one day you're going to die. And this hell that is spoken about, you will end up there. The other thing, hell is real. It's not a trial. It's not a place that you can go to. And this is really summarizing it. It's not a place that you can go to and then you decide, okay, don't get too hot, so I'm coming back. It's a place that you have to understand. Once you get there, there is no return. Now, also, you cannot come back from there to warn anybody. So if you are not taking the warning now, once you get there, you are doomed. There is a great golf fix and you can't pass from there to over there or from up there to down there. So you need to do it now. Now, let's look at the last thing that I want to touch on as I close, which is what I've been harping on for the most. Hell was not made for human. It was made for the devil and his angels. And that's why there is a specific fire set aside for it. My friend, you don't need to go there. My sister, you don't need to go there. My brother, you don't need to go there. Whether you have me as an enemy or not, I'm here this morning to persuade you not to go there. And they might ask, how, how do I escape hell, um, Mr. Um, Pastor? How do I escape that, that, that place of doom and gloom, of pain and suffering, where the worms die not? Where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Let me tell you how you escape hell. If you would believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe the finished work that he has done, that while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. And now he's in heaven making intercession for you to the Father you will receive eternal life. You will escape death. Listen, Christ died so that you don't have to die again. Christ died so that you can receive eternal life. Christ died so by faith in him, you will spend eternity with him in heaven. And that is what I am offering you this morning. Let me just say this prayer. Father, for that man, for that woman who is struggling at this time, who, my God, their present destination was hell. I pray that, Lord, you will transform that person's life. That, God, you will minister and convict that person so powerfully that that man, that woman, that person, whoever they are, that, God, you will, oh God, by the Spirit, so convict them that they will believe in your finished work. They will accept your finished work. And that God, on that dreadful day, that day of judgment, that God, 
They will be with you in paradise. They will be with you in heaven as a result of accepting the eternal life that you offer. Oh God, for that man that is saying that I have time, touch his heart and let him know that God, none of us know the day or the hour when you're going to come. And none of us know when death is going to come. And so I ask this morning that God, you touch many hearts, touch many lives, transform them by your power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have said that, said that prayer, if you have asked Jesus to come into your life, if you have asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, if you, have, if you believe that he is able to deliver you from your sins, you are saved this morning. It is not how you feel, it is your faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to say this to you this morning. If you have done that, you're on your way and God will keep you from falling. God bless you and again, have a wonderful independence. See you next week. Bye-bye.